A key component of modern video games is physics simulations which allow for immersive gameplay. Most of these physics simulations rely on programs called physics engines. Many physics engines are actually purchased by game developers from other companies, which allows them to put more effort in actually making a good game. The key limiting factor in how good a physics engine is, is mainly processing power of modern computers. The physics of the real world are so complex that no computer today could possibly run in real time all of the processes that go on in the world. Take this box for example. In the real world, many forces would act on it. Gravity, the force of the ground pushing against it, the force of the air pressure on it, and the atomic interactions that compose any object in the real world. These are just too complex for modern processing power to handle. But the most obvious aspects of physical interactions can be simulated quite easily, such as gravity. But for gravity to have an effect, even the simple process of things being able to move has to be simulated. Properties such as momentum, weight, velocity, and air resistance have to be simulated by the physics engine. Once these properties are in place, more complex interactions, such as those of rotating bodies, can be realistically simulated. The game I've been showing to you so far, and will continue to show you, is Gary's Mod, which is a physics-driven sandbox game which gives players a multitude of tools to manipulate the physics scene in the video game Half-Life 2, and makes an ideal tool to demonstrate the physics of video games. As you have seen in the video so far, Many of the physical interactions of the world are simulated in this game. Most of the physical objects in the game are capable of physical interactions, such as the camera which is filming most of this. As with many video games, a great deal of the ingenuity of the developers is lavished on explosives, as they are a key component of many combat areas of the game. These explosions interact with enemies in the game through destroying them oftentimes, and explosives can also interact with each other by setting off chain reactions, such as this one seen here, which allows for the uh, continuous burning and destruction of these explosive barrels here, which are a key component of many games, although they make very little rational sense in the real world. Despite how realistic some aspects of video game physics are, they are flawed and inaccurate in many ways. Although some objects are destroyable, this is usually pre-built and will not continue after a certain point, unlike real objects which can be divided into their component atoms. Fire, even though it looks fairly realistic, has absolutely nothing to do with the combustion of organic compounds. Instead, it's a series of 2D images that are animated to simulate fire. Because of the complexity of the physics of gases, almost no video games simulate them in real time. Instead, they use semi-transparent 2D overlays in a 3D space, which looks fairly similar. Another inconsistency is gravity, which when it does work, may not work exactly as it does in the real world. Also, as all of the physics in the video game is simulated, the gravity and other major rules of physics can be broken quite easily. This is because all the physics in the video game are made up of a system of rules that can be easily modified, as most of them use single variables to determine things like the force of gravity and the video game developers often insert easy ways to modify these values as it is useful for testing the video game, but it can be accessed later for the purposes of cheating, or just for fun, such as this cheat which is known as noclip and allows you basically to fly. Also, the physics of projectiles is also extremely exaggerated in the vein of Hollywood movies, as it, the purpose of the video game is to entertain and not necessarily to provide a uh, accurate representation of the physical world. Some creatures in this video game use physical principles to move around and to attack their enemies. This is usually done by simple creatures, such as these Mad Hacks, who are flying razor blades, basically, and merely have to go towards the enemy and come into contact with them, which does not require a huge amount of simulation. The way in which the Mad Hacks are physically simulated can be seen by tying one to a rope, which causes it to be restrained. But these physically simulated creatures are the minority in the game. As the majority of creatures in this game, and in most games, perform almost any action with pre-built animations, which are significantly less processor intensive than the multitude of interactions which would take place in any realistic biological system. Although this does make any interaction between characters in the physical world somewhat unrealistic because they are not actually physical entities themselves. But only while they are moving under their own power. 
Once they stop moving, they become physical entities known as ragdolls, called as such because of the limpness of the joints. Once they enter the state, the characters are physical entities and can perform multitudes of interaction with other physical objects in the game. There can be interactions between animated entities and physical entities in the world. But these interactions have to be pre-made and it takes a great deal of time and effort to create them. The chief reason the creatures use animations is because their movements are so complex from the physical standpoint that they cannot be simulated in real time using today's technology. But because animations are used, many interesting and entertaining behaviors can be created. There can be physical interaction between two animated objects, but oftentimes this is very limited and simplistic. For example, in the opening scene of this video, there is actually very little interaction between the character driving the vehicle and the vehicle itself. Despite these limitations, modern video games have significantly more complex physical interactions than in previous generations, such as in this video game called Deus Ex, which has advanced physics for its time, but still has no rotation of objects, and runs in slow motion due to a bug. Despite these flaws, the physics in a video game can greatly enhance its entertainment value, such as creating useful and entertaining objects through the use of the in-game items and the physical interactions between them. As computer technology advances, so will the physics simulations become more advanced. Hopefully, the entertainment of the games will also increase proportionally. Because, in the end, video games are a source of entertainment, and physics can provide an essential part of that as well.